Hey bunnies, welcome back to the developer diary. This is day seven, I believe. These videos are taking like two hours of my life to produce each day. I didn't really think about it. Like, I don't know what I want to do because I don't want to stream it because the reason that this, like I, you know, I said that I wanted it to be similar to like a podcast in that like, it's going to be lazy. We're just going to like talk about programming and like that kind of thing. And you're going to watch me as I slowly produce this game, right? My issue with that is that I have to record my desktop. I tried, like I, I tried setting it up for like streaming purposes, like setting up Unity and Notepad and having it in like programs and things and streaming like the different program. It did not work. Like it was just, it was, it was a chore to hide the window basically. So the issue is if I'm Googling something, you guys see everything that I like. You see my search history, you see my, um, you see what I'm looking up. You see like if I, you know, get a message, you'll see that and I have to edit all of that out as I'm like, <laughs> as I'm on the, like on the fly. And then there's also the fact that this is a huge wall of text. So I need to kind of zoom in on it. So you know what I'm focusing on. Yeah, it just, it just kind of gets, it just kind of gets a bit scary. I have to edit it, but also this is web programming, right? So you don't want to watch half an hour of me focusing on a single bug that I've got going wrong. Now you might notice I'm looking at the goblin handler, but it might look a little confusing to you guys. I have changed a few things off camera. I'm very sorry that I changed things off camera, but I felt like firstly, there's a lot of things I added that I noticed while I was editing that didn't need to be added. I added them because I thought that it might fix the bugs, but it turns out that they weren't doing anything essentially. It was just like an extra, extra parameter that's doing absolutely nothing because it's already checking the parameter earlier on, which I, I thought it was catching more things, but it was obviously not. So I changed a few things. Uh, one of the things I specifically changed was, I don't need to do that anymore. I was debugging this because there was something wrong with it. Um, and I don't know, I still don't know what happened. Uh, I was editing and then suddenly they stopped interacting with each other. They stopped interacting with each other. I'm not sure why they stopped interacting with each other, but I deleted all of the objects and put another game object for like a prefab goblin game object back in. And now they all know what's happening. So I'm guessing it was a Unity issue and not the actual game issue. Um, if it was the game issue, we're in big trouble because I'm gonna like I'm gonna build the game and it's gonna be trash. You know, something's gonna just instantly break. Uh, remember our on trigger enter and how I was doing an overlap sphere every single time? I did what I said I was gonna do. I've removed the overlap sphere, but I've put it at the start. So this now. The first check is the overlap sphere, checks if everything's in the area, because if something's in the area already, I don't think the trigger enter works. So it'll just check everything's in the area instantly, make a list, check it against the list, and then everything after that is tested with uh, our, the our, like on trigger. So if something leaves, it's left. If something enters, it's entered. And it should just like figure out each time what's happening with the arrays. I used a, like I've, I've done this many times before, but I didn't think I wanted to do it this time. Um, I did it. So basically what I've got is it'll tell you where the game object is that's it's looking at. I'll tell you where the game object rotation is. So where, well, no, sorry. It'll tell you like the point that the character is, and then it'll rotate the goblin towards the player. So if the player notices you and is not looking at you, it will turn towards you. See how that's a good? So now like if I get too close, it'll the goblins will turn towards me and it'll be scary. What happens with that? See, there's a speed functionality and I've got a speed here on initialization. And so each goblin is randomized with a different speed. Now I kind of want to add that speed to other things as well. So like the rotation speed here, and then maybe also like goblin speed is different. So the goblins will run away faster or slower depending on what's happening. What else did we do? Oh, during our rotation issues, I realized that um, we had a big issue with the translation. Um, sometimes goblins would run diagonal to the player and to the left of the player. And the reason for that is because the object is rotating now and like it wasn't rotating before but i did notice there was some issues with it moving in a weird direction so now translate apparently isn't in space isn't in the world space it's in the game object space so i've changed that to world so now it'll move to the player in the world space and that's always going to be away from the player but not towards anything so anything else that i did before we start this up i think that's everything for here did i do anything with the light behaviors nothing else was changed here nothing else was changed in the boss behavior there's still the uh ethereal form thing what else did I do? I 
Made a cylinder. Oh yeah, I was going to turn it into a light. So basically what I wanted to do is I wanted to make a light behavior, an actual light behavior. And so what I, what would happen is um, I just chuck this on any game object. I would maybe change the layer so that if it's on the like torch layer, it'll count as a torch layer. If it's on the like lamp layer or like spotlight, I get a uh, point light, I guess I would call it the point light layer because that's what they are. They're point lights. Then I would make an overlap sphere instead of a ray cast and that would shoot it at the proper place, it would be nice because it means that they're like, again, like I was saying in a, a few earlier episodes, I really want um this to be, um I guess, modular, you know? Like I, I want to grab a goblin from this world, take it to another world, and it, it works. Something I do want to do, however, is make an on collision enter. Something that I keep forgetting to do, on collision stay, how about? And we'll make a collider, collision, uh, col, sorry. So like, yeah, obviously I'm ignoring the boss because I am scared of programming an actual boss fight. It's a scary thing and I, I'm, I'm scared of it and I don't want to touch it. So what I think I need, right, is not in start, surely not in start. So I want a boolean has air equals false right now on on collision stay is i think how it's called so if col dot tag equals it's late guys it's late i should really do these at appro appropriate times but also there's like there's a window right here and light gets in and then you can see even more green screen in the background which is not fun so if col dot tag uh equals do these have tags do these have yeah untagged let's call this brown uh yeah, ground. We'll just call it ground for now. Okay, if the tag is ground, what I want to do is has air equals false. Has air equals true. I always forget to do this when I'm starting out, and then I add it in later. Um, so what happens is, I obviously don't want to move the player if it's in the air, right? Like if I'm shooting a light at someone, right? Like if I, if I shone a light at a creature, I wouldn't want the creature who is in the air to suddenly fly backwards for no reason. I'm, it, my character's not a wizard, it's a person holding a torch. The message parameter has to be of type collision. So for some reason this is collision instead of... Okay, this should work. Now if I pause it and I check my goblins, they all have air still. Why do they all have air still? This is, these are, this is untagged, this is untagged. You know what? Bet you that was gonna work from the start again. Doesn't have air, has air. Oops, come back. Yeah, okay, cool. So that works, and what I wanna do with that is that obviously it can't rotate and it can't uh, move in the air. In fact, what would be an easy way to do this is all of update essentially right now. Yeah, all of update except for the kill distance, they have to be grounded. Uh, for any of this to work. So I may as well do that and then anything that doesn't need to be grounded can come outside with the kill distance. Unless there, okay, actually, you know what, you know what would be an even better thing? If I just get that rigid body, and I freeze their Y positions for now, right? They're all frozen in, frozen in the air. Okay, so they're not noticing me. Actually, they did notice me. That might have been the light though. Something else that they can't do is run away when they have air. So, let's uh, do that. Kill distance is greater than this and that. Kill distance equals that. Fear equals that. They shouldn't be moving. What what happened there? Oh, it's is the upper, did I do it the wrong way around? Collision exit ground. Wait, hang on. If I drop, let's just drop one of these goblins. I didn't even think about that. If, I've noticed that that's was false, and then when it drops and hits the ground. Wait up, did it fuck up again? It's starting off false. It should be starting off true. I'm gonna, s you know what? It's cause I added it and then I didn't reset it. So if I go Goblin 3 and then I reset that. Yeah, it's just cause it's literally, again, it's this Unity editor problem, not a me problem. So this should nothing when I hit it. They're not looking at me. And then I'll drop them. Pew. 
instantly looking at me, instantly running away. And you, drop you. Pew. Instantly looking at me, instantly running away. Cool. Yeah, so the goblin is pretty much fixed. Something, okay, so something I want to do is obviously we've got the this stuff, um, the combat mechanics, right? And we've got the crouch and the head bubble running. I think the head bubble running is going to be a little bit annoying to do because I'm going to have to do kind of a co-routine where it will bob when I'm holding left shift. Uh, something I can potentially do though is a run handler. So if input, uh, not run, sorry, dot get button uh, crouch. We want to set up a crouch button, which as we remember from last time, you go edit project settings, inputs. Oh, that this is something I didn't mention. It's something that I really need to mention. So queries hit triggers. I noticed my ray trace was hitting them regardless of where they are. The reason for that is our ray cast hit uh, hits triggers as well as um, colliders. I turned that off. So now it's only hitting the box. It's not hitting the colliders. You want to change it to crouch. You want to change it to left. Kataril, that worked. Didn't expect that one to work. Okay, so left Kataril. If I press left Kataril, what happens? Um, well, firstly, we're crouching, but... Okay, so if we're crouching, obviously speed is lowered. So speed will be like, what, five? No, speed will be 20, 30. Now what we need to do is... I need to change the camera's perspective, right? I'm actually gonna look up first person crouching just straight up because... So I, I'm imagining what I'm gonna do is move the transform for the camera down character controller what is how does that work i've like never even like I, i've never actually looked at how these character controller things work character controller does that do anything to me okay so like character controller hasn't done anything yet but let's try this out so character controller public is it a controller my controller um my controller equals this dot character controller Whoa. is that gonna work it's probably not gonna work Okay, we'll try this. Okay, it's character controller up top as well. Don't know why I didn't think about that. That, okay, we've got the character controller initialized. So character controller dot height equals two. Apparently that's the default. Not sure why. Character controller dot height equals one. Yeah, it's fair. Oh, oops. Done, okay, now. If I still don't know why it's doing that. Oh, okay. So you see, that's interesting. What the character, like clicking, like clicking, changing the height means that there's like an extra thing going down. I have no idea. Like, so I'm confused about what happens here. So there's, I'm like up on the sky, right? And then if I click control, I do, I crouch. Like I do crouching like it's supposed to. But then when I move, I'm off this like ledge, this fake ledge. So what's happening here? Wait up, okay, hang on. So what if, so if, what I think is happening is if I remove the rigid body, what happens now? It's not the case, okay. Actually, hang on. What if I just change that to transform, transform, transform. Huh. I think what I do is if I just go into our movement behavior and I remove all of this. Okay, so this should work while the rigid body is attached. Yeah, so because the rigid body is now attached, everything looks to be good. Okay, you can go up here and then we will remove component and apply to player yeah okay wsd works crouching technically works hmm. Mm -hmm. okay the issue at the moment is now the camera needs to move at the same time but still need to fix that so it doesn't drop down and only, okay, so that's that's an issue that we're gonna have to do deal with for our rigid body that I didn't think about. I remember why I used all, I used all these to try and figure stuff out. So because we're just making the position equals the position, right? The head stuff, however, is the transform and the head stuff is what we're a bit concerned about at the moment. What if we like okay, head transform dot position equals my cam dot transform my cam transform actually is what it's called, right? So head transform dot position 
was my cam transform. What happens now? Cannot conform, convert, transform to, uh, okay. That was dumb to start with. Dot position, we good, okay. Well, see, this is why I'm so confused. This equals where, like, like this equals, hang on, what is a head transform? What, what's happening here? Where is, like, in what world does that move? So, like, if I turn that off, right, then nothing moves. But if I turn it on, but, like, it's not, it shouldn't be doing anything, right? Like, if head transform dot position equals my transform dot position, that doesn't change the camera position. Oh, hang on, the head angle equals head transform dot rotation. But, like, where is the head angle set? And what did I have it before? It was the player, right? What if I change it to the player again, right? What happens then? Oh, this dot transform. Aha. Interesting. Oh, it's lowercase plus. Okay, what happens now? Okay, what if I do my controller dot height? and float aha uh -huh. does y count as yeah so zero zero f, f plus new victor three that worked there we go it looks really dumb on the thing but it works so today where we've started using character controllers because we've realized character controllers are probably better for what we want because we're not using physics we're probably not actually going to have a jump mechanic at all because I don't see there being a purpose for a jump mechanic in most horror games. But there's definitely purposes for crouch mechanics. Should I like lerp it? How you how you do lerp before we finish? So one, two, zero point five F. Same thing, but two one. So nothing is happening. Oh, it's doing it the other way around now. I'm so confused about how the number works. Is it like, nothing's changing. Nothing is changing, guys. Time minus start time duration. Why do you do it like that? Float T, float R, float start T, X, float start T, Y, bam, bam. And we'll put duration up here. We'll call it public float duration equals five F. Don't need to put F if it's a float. And then we can just put that as T and we can put that as R. Start time does not exist in the current context. That's because it's start T uh, Y and start T X. Use of unassigned a variable start T X and start T Y. Oh, that equals, sorry, time dot time. That's why that's not working, right? Nothing changed. I mean, it did a lot more than I was expecting. It was like I was going to do. I, I keep every time I start programming, I just like go nuts on it. And like I could honestly do it for ages, but then I realized that I have to edit the whole fucking video. Tell me to stop. Hopefully we'll start from the boss. The crouching is like the crouching works. Um, Next episode, we probably have to. Okay, actually, I need it. Yeah, kinda. Something else we need to do is not move on Y axis. That's important right now, because uh, that's going to fuck us up, because if we have a game and you can fly, you know? Oh, so like at the moment, these are the only things that are happening, right? Move horizontal is doing that, move horizontal is doing that, and then position is equal to that, right? So the issue is I wanted to, hang on, if I do that, and then I do that, and I open that back up, right? Okay, it's still flying, it's doing nothing different. What happens if I do that and don't chuck any of that? Oh, I see. The only difference between that and that is that now it's not moving up when I move up, it, but it's not. So like if my camera's transform direction, transforms the direction from the local space to the world space. So why is the camera, why did I, I mean, I think I looked up how to do this, but for some reason the camera's 
space.self. What happens if I put say space.self right now? This.transform.rotation equals that. This could be bad. Minus movement. Okay, it's reversed it. Makes sense. Okay, what I think I need to do is make a second camera transform, and the camera transform will be the exact. Actually, you know what? This is a transform to the camera, right? I can do that right now. I can make a new carrot, new transform. Is there anything? Okay, so if I, what we can use is the second one. We'll call it public transform move camera, right? So it'll be the camera that allows movement. Move camera will then equal my cam transform let's put it in here so move camera equals my cam transform but then move camera dot y zero f transform is not connected oh, transform dot position not return value of transform dot position because it's not a valuable isn't it though okay we're gonna have to come back to this i got a bit excited i shouldn't have bothered um, there is something, there is definitely something we can do for this. Um, I've looked it up. There are ways, but like I, I tried them and it didn't work and I'm, I'm not sure what I got wrong, but now that I've been doing this for like, you know, seven days, I think, um, surely I can get something out of it. So I'll see you there. Um, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment telling me what you enjoy if you want to see some other stuff. Um, yeah. See you later. Funny out. Yeah.